Thank you so much. Tonight's program deals with an issue that has tormented two cities for many years now. For some time, a six-foot mound of dirt has been the center of controversy, even though 20 or so teenagers of the Hessville neighborhood of Hammond find this mound of dirt to be the perfect course for their dirt bikes. Some residents and most city council members of neighborhood Gary see the earthen barrier as a symbol of racial antagonism. They want it removed. Hamill officials contend that the wall is strictly to contain the pollution of Midco 1 and Midco 2. But they want to remove the six-foot mound of dirt only to replace it with a permanent clay and concrete one. A tale of two Indiana cities, dividing them, the wall. Is this an issue of public health or an issue of racism? We seek the answer on this edition of the Frank Jackson Show. I'll be back in a moment. Thank you so much. Welcome back. A tale of two cities, two Indiana cities. The heated controversy is centered around a wall. We're trying to find out tonight whether or not this wall is really there for health reasons, or is this a symbol of racism? This is one of the strangest shows that I've ever done. I need to start out by showing the entire set. We've got three console people from the Gary City Council here. Originally, this show was designed to involve three city council persons from both sides, from Gary, three council persons, and three council members from Hammond. We tried very hard pulling it together once we got into the studio. There was a, we ended up with a very difficult situation. Um, I yet have three people here from Gary, um, but why don't you try to help me to understand, uh, Dr. Vernon G. Smith, why we only have the three people from Gary and the three officials from Hammond have left us. Frank, let me just begin by saying it's a pleasure to be on your show again. And I do want to welcome you. Okay. And you've been with me several times. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, let me just try to uh, share with you my understanding of what has occurred uh, today. Uh, first of all, it was our understanding, as you have shared, that there will be three council members from Hammond and three council members from Gary to discuss the issue of the wall whether it is a health problem or whether it's a wall of racism. <clears throat> when we arrived here, we come to find out that uh, the leader, uh, Councilman Golick from Hammond, was not able to secure the support of his city council members in attending and being a uh, participant in today's program. Uh, as a result, uh, he brought uh, a couple of technical persons uh, from the Hammond administration, uh, the director of their environmental studies, and uh, I understand the uh, city engineer from Hammond. Uh, the council members objected to that because basically council, councils are composed of lay persons, and they are not expected to have expertise uh, or to be uh, knowledgeable in detail of all of the kinds of environmental technical terms and so forth that might be used by a person who has studied uh, that field. Uh, we do have the briefing uh, of our administration. We're aware of the facts. We have the findings and so forth, so we're not ill-prepared. But uh, we did not, we objected rather, to the fact that there weren't council members as we originally understood it would be. Instead, we had technical person, engineers, and environmental specialists that were here to, uh, to debate this issue. As a result, as we know, they, they just chose to, to leave. The issue is such a heated one until you know, I, I really forgot to introduce uh, Councilman Vernon G. Smith, uh, the Gary City Council, uh, formerly the president of the Gary City Council. Also, uh, Dora Thula, Councilwoman Dora Thula um, Millinder is with me in studio, who is from the Gary City Council. And I do welcome you to the Frank Jackson Show. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Now, if you were not ill-prepared, why then did you refuse to go on? No, we are prepared. Uh, I, I think your wording is not quite 
Uh, we're not ill prepared, what, what, but we are not engineers and we are not environmental specialists. However, we have been apprised of what the facts are by our city engineer, and we called him and had him come into the studio. He is here. Now, we have information. We're not ill prepared. We know what it's well, all about. No, I'm, I'm not saying you're ill prepared. Um, I, I believe um, Dr. Vernon Smith said that you were not ill prepared. So my question was, if that is in fact the case, if you are not ill-prepared and were not ill-prepared oh, before your technician came, why then did you refuse to go on? Why, why was our show detained? Well, I think uh, Dr. Smith explained it. I mean, why would I, someone who's gone to school for 20 years to be an engineer and gone back and gotten more courses, or someone who studied air pollution for 20 years and gone back and back and back, why would I sit here a librarian and try to go up against him. He would not want to go up against me if well, I were to some degree that you were ill prepared. Well, no, if you know, no, let let's not put it that, that way. That is not the case. That's not the case. We are prepared to deal with the issue as the Hammond Council members are prepared to deal with the issue. When they vote to put the, up a permanent wall or to put in a temporary wall, we are as much prepared as they are. However, when we start to debate with a person who is a specialist in a field, then you might say that we cannot compete with them, but it's not a matter of being ill-prepared. Okay. Is it because of the technical jargon? Yes. If they start talking about a quitter, do you know what a quitter is? The average citizen does a not know. A person who gives up. Well, I say <laughs> quitter. <laughs> I just start talking about soil boy, uh, 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 borings or monitoring walls, or you start talking about uh, uh, surface water, groundwater. Those are t terms and different kinds of uh, things that might the average person might not be able to, to, to debate if they start dealing with uh, theories that you can raise ground so many feet and then it stops uh, walls or how far down you have to go to put a barrier. We can't deal with those kinds of technical kinds of things because we're not prepared for that. But we are prepared once we get findings, once we get information, to process that information and to make decisions for the, the benefit of the citizens of Gary. Okay. I might point out that the people from Hammond who, who were here, uh, Councilman Robert Golak of the 6th District of Hammond um, was here. Uh, he was not able to recruit other council members from the city of Hammond, rather. Um, Milan Krasinski was here, who is the coordinator of the Solid Waste, Water, and Noise Pollution Division of the Hammond Department of Environmental Management, as was Ron Novak, director of Hammond Department of Environmental Management. So these were the three experts from the city of Hammond who were here and uh, saw fit to walk out of our studio. Uh, it's a very heated, heated uh, controversy that we're dealing with today and um, I think one of the things that that impressed me in terms of the the, the magnitude of, uh, of this issue was the fact that that everybody was refusing to appear on air everybody wanted things to be just so before appearing now, I'm still a little uh, in the dark I'm, I'm kind of looking through a dark glass trying to figure out uh, why we yet have three people here I hope that there's some way for us to do a follow-up to what we're doing here today. I did not want to go on the air, um, or I didn't want to cancel the show because uh, the people of Hammond walked out. Um, I hope that, that there's some way we can get them back into the studio, because I think that we need to hear both sides of the issue. If it means bringing in all of the technical people from both sides, if it means bringing in the entire city consoles from both sides, then that's what we need to do. But the issue is such a strong one at this point until it mandates doing a follow-up to what we're doing here today. But you also, can't force people to come. If they don't want to come, they won't be here. No, they won't come if, uh, if, if they don't want to come. There's no right. question about that at all. But at the same time, I think that perhaps um, what Hammond uh, wanted to do was present themselves as intelligently as they possibly could. Now, what I see, I, I see the mix-up being when... Um, my producer approached both sides. He did say to the people from Gary that what we want are three council members from the city of Gary and three council members from the city of Hammond. Exactly, Frank. And uh, the problem that we have is that 
We knew the kind of game that was going to be played, okay? It was a debate between well, both let, sides. Let, let, let me explain the, the rules on us, okay? Let, let, let me explain the whole thing, and then, then, then you, you go ahead and uh, reiterate what you are trying to say right now. Um, when Hammond was told about the need for three council members, they, from what I understand, were not able to pull together the support of three members of council, so they ended up with, with Councilman Robert Golick, who brought in two experts along with himself. And let me just share with you, I think that points out that this is a one-man show on the part of Golick. Well, let, 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 me, let, me just, let me just finish, finish making okay. the point. So my producer didn't go back to Gary to say to Gary uh, that Hammond's bringing in experts. So when you walked in, you walked into a situation where they had experts because they said they couldn't pull together council members. Uh, when you decided to bring your experts in, they said that we were changing the rules on them. So it put us in a very horrible situation. Uh, it, it made the, the show look somewhat um, biased. It, it, it uh, made the station uh, look to some degree biased, and that isn't the situation at all. We didn't intend for it to work out this way, and we do want to pull this show back together. We do want to do a follow-up, and we want to bring in as many experts and as many whoever as we possibly can. Now, you were about to say, Dr. Smith. Yeah, you know, I, I think what has happened is that the rules have been changed. I think that if you put yourself in a position of a politician on a municipal level, on a local level, and you had to debate an issue uh, with another politician on a local uh, level, say concerning uh, uh, intergovernmental relationships with other countries. You will feel comfortable in doing that from having re read uh, literature, having uh, read newspapers and so forth with a person on a local level. But you will be at a disadvantage if the President of the United States, who's actually been there, were here debating with you. Likewise, we've gotten information, we've been able to process that, that information. We're intelligent people, okay? We study, we do our homework. But at the same time, if you bring an expert in who's had 20 years experience, they can do a snow job on you. So I'm saying that we, we, we understood what the game was to be, a debate between two sides, the issue being the wall. But then you change the rules of who was supposed to be here. Okay, so are you, are you saying that, that we deliberately did this? I'm not saying, no, I don't think you did it deliberately. I'm saying because you don't have the intense understanding of the difference. So you said three and three. That seems like it's equal. But it's not equal. If I put three persons over here who happen to be dance uh, stars, no, I, I think you're okay, well and then you take three persons over here who happen to be pilots, and we want to come discuss the topic of aviation, <laughs> then it's not equal. Okay, your, your point's well taken, and uh, we stand corrected. I, I want to personally apologize to you, and I also want to apologize to the city of Hammond for any conflict that we may have may have created by not sharing with both sides what the game plan would really be. Now, we did share with both sides what the game plan would be. We didn't share the change. Right. When Hammond changed, we did not say that to you. And when you attempted to try to... to I don't want to go on that. Right, but let me just share one more point with you. When, when you have a debate, let's look at the presidential debate. Let, let me just get one more person in. in, in let, me, let me introduce one more person. Okay. Then we'll talk about the presidential debates and everything else. But I am trying very desperately now to get Councilman from the Gary City Council, Councilman Clemens Allen Jr. Uh, and I want to welcome you, Councilman Allen, uh, to the Frank Jackson Show. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, you've heard uh, what these uh, two distinguished uh, council persons have said. Uh, are you in agreement with them? As if I, am in, uh, I am in total agreement okay. with their assessment of the uh, situation, Mr. Johnson, because uh, I know from experience that uh, as we attempt to relate to the community at large all of the circumstances involved uh, with this wall, uh, somewhere along the line, residents from both communities will make a decision. Uh, Mr. Jackson, I'm sorry. <laughs> I stand corrected. Thank you very much. Uh, and that decision, I believe, will be based upon not necessarily what's right and wrong, but to a large extent, the manner in which the information is, in fact, presented. And so perception is extremely important. And as we were attempting to bring our technician and our expert on board, I think that there was some resentment on the part of the Hammond officials who stated that we were, in fact, changing the rules, but we were not really doing that. We were just trying to make sure 
there was some parity in relationship to any technical information that was espoused by the Hammond officials that could be exchanged by the Gary City officials. And so here again, I think that that's extremely important when you began to make the kind of presentation that we're trying to make relative to the residents of Northwest Indiana and the impact that their decisions will have on the uh, removal of that wall or either the, the further uh, uh, proliferation of the construction of that wall. Councilman Smith, why would they object to you bringing on experts to discuss with their experts? Well, I think they understood initially that they could bring the three persons that they were going to bring and that we were going to be represented as we are. When we began to say it's unfair, uh, then at that point they had some, com some problems with changing. Uh, I certainly would uh, understand uh, Mr. Golick's posture. Uh, he wanted to come over and do, do a snow job, okay? And so if he could get the, the, the conditions right for that snow jobbing process, then, then he would want to pr promote that. If he could not do that, then he, want, he wanted to pull out. I think it's significant to note that he doesn't have the support of his council, that you could not get three members of the council to come or two others to come with him. If it was such a vital issue, uh, as such as it is, it is proposed to be in the city of Hammond, it would seem to me that all of the council members from Hammond would be eager to be represented here to discuss that issue. I need to take a break. The wall between Hammond and Gary, is it a health issue or is it a, an issue of racism? We'll be back to talk, to talk further about this in just a moment. And I do welcome you back to the Frank Jackson Show. We're talking about the wall dividing the cities of Hammond and Gary. Is this an issue of racism or is it really designed for health reasons? We've been talking already with Councilman Clem Allen, um, Councilwoman Dolly Millender, and Councilman Vernon G. Smith all from the Gary City Council. Just joining us on set here are Ron Matlock, who is the organizer of the ongoing demonstrations concerning that wall, and Roland Elvam, Elvamwena. Is that it? Yes. <laughs> Gentlemen, I welcome you. He's the city engineer of Gary, and I welcome you both to the Frank Jackson Show. Thank you, Frank. Um, you don't mind if I call you Roland, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I really needed that. Um, gentlemen, you've heard already uh, what the issues are to some degree. Is there anything that you can add to that? Um, Ron, you're leading demonstrations concerning the wall. Why are you doing that? Well, I'm doing it, as you very well know. That, that wall has been there for uh, about eight years now. And I feel that the city council certainly has been doing along with the mayor in terms of trying to get that wall down. Now, I think we got to a point that since no negotiation had tend to seem broke down, I, I believe it's been coming up on us as people in this community to do whatever we feel is necessary to get that wall down. But why do you want it down, Ron? Well, we want it down because certainly we cannot have a wall that stand between two cities, the black on one side and the white on the other. Uh, and all this thing that we're saying in this community, certainly we should not go into another community and spend our money when our city is dying. If they cannot have respect at least to take that wall down through negotiations, uh, members of the city council and the mayor, certainly I feel as a, a community activist along with a union leader to do whatever I feel is necessary to, to get the wall down. Roland, you are the city engineer, city of Gary. Yes. Now what Hammond is saying is that the wall is there for health reasons to keep the, the uh, chemicals, the, the poisonous chemicals, from flowing into Hammond from Gary. Is that true or false? And if it's true, it sounds like a good idea to me. Oh, right now is uh, the biggest problem there they're talking about is the water contamination, the runoff that's going to Hammond. If the water, if that, if that is only the runoff they're talking about, they're not supposed to put a six-foot wall they can put on a hump because the water, in my calculation, if the water continues flowing, it's not even an inch above the ground, above the center line of the road. 
Therefore, a six-foot wall, even a six-foot wall reaches into half foot, half, half foot of that wall. The entire hemon, the entire gary is going to be underwater. Not so six you're foot. saying a six-inch hump would not do the six job. inches. Uh, six inches would keep the water. About a foot of hump. A foot, one foot, twelve inches would keep the water back. Yes. Okay, uh, Councilwoman uh, Millender, would you object to that? I would object to that too because I went to the last meeting that the EPA had and they said there is no contamination coming from Gary into uh, Hammond. You see, the thing of it is, Mr. Jackson. Well, there wouldn't be if there's a wall there no, to prevent no, it. No, no, no. The wall. The no, they now. said the wall does not have anything to do with it at all. The thing that they're not letting people know is that the homes that they live in were constructed on contaminated land. So if there's any contamination, it's already there. There's none coming from Gary. It's already been told. In fact, Mr. Smith, Dr. Smith has the report that says there's no contamination coming from Gary over there. And this is from the EPA. See, what Jackson Roman was saying, I think, was the fact that if there was, this, if this was a given, and it's not a given, then a, a 6 to 12 inch wall would be a hump, would be enough to stop surface water. But initially, when they they built the uh, the hump or the mound there, they indicated that it was groundwater, uh, which is underneath the, the, the surface of the earth, that was causing the problem. EPA has discovered that neither one that the water is not moving on the surface water or underground water uh, into Hammond. That there's little movement at all. That it's in the center of the Ninth Avenue dump, dump, and there's been very little movement. Let me, let me ask you something. I need someone to tell me why the big to-do over a wall on 1 Street, 9th Avenue. Certainly, this isn't going to divide uh, two cities. There are so many other ways in and out of Hammond and Gary. You know, I think why it's the big deal over, over 1 Street? I think it's the, the principle of the matter here, uh, Mr. Jackson. And I think that perhaps what we need to look at is... Uh, uh, when the wall was constructed and some of the circumstances that led up to the to the construction of the wall and some of the myths that have been associated with that construction relative to what we interpret to be bigotry and racism okay uh, we have clearly uh, within the Gary community to established midco dump sites uh, that those those identifications have been designated by the federal government uh, in 1981 and I might say that the Ninth Avenue dump site is uh, a portion of Midco 2, which is located at 5900 West Industrial Highway. Uh, in June of 1981, we had an inordinate amount of rain in Gary and Hammond area. And it was the first time we had had that much water in a number of years. Uh, there was some speculation on the part of some Hammond residents that uh, some of the water that was in their community uh, was contaminated and that that contamination uh, was coming from the Gary area. Uh, they had a doctor uh, and certain other EPA specialists who conducted examinations and provided some technical knowledge and it was decided at that time that there was no ill effects at all <clears throat> from any of the water that may have been in the Hammond area coming from the Gary side. In an effort to alleviate some fears, I think the Hammond officials decided to construct that wall. Uh, we have met with them on several occasions, and we've tried to offer alternatives to the construction of that wall and the maintenance of that wall. Uh, yet there have been repeated efforts to, to build a wall higher, bigger, and stronger. And now we're presently looking at a piece of legislation that's before the Hammond City Council presently that would provide $15,000 to eliminate the dirt barrier and construct a concrete barrier. Now let's look at the symbol that that represents. You said that, you know, there's 5th Avenue, there's 15th Avenue, there's the, the Borman Expressway. Uh, what we are missing in this entire scenario here is uh, the most profound result of a study uh, that was conducted over a year ago as certain experts began to look at the demographics of the Northwest Indiana area and compare them with other areas in this country. It was decided then that Lake County in Northwest Indiana was perhaps the most uh, segregated uh, area in this country. 
Now, there are people, both black and white, who would deny that. And I'm simply saying that as, as an elected leader, whether that, that is real or whether it's imagined, as leaders of a community... Councilman, Councilman is it possible, is it conceivable, that because you have that knowledge or you've heard that, is it conceivable that Gary is now somewhat paranoid? No. No, negative. Okay, let's, let's look at the merit okay. contained on this no. issue. Absolutely not. Uh, as an elected leader, you have the responsibility to look at that, whether you believe that or not, and determine what you can do as a leader in the community to eliminate those kinds of perceptions or fears uh, or issues if, in fact, they contain merit, and I believe to a large extent they do. Uh, I certainly believe that the continued maintenance of a wall that separates two communities on a major thoroughfare only enhances and embraces the idea that the racism is there, okay? And when you began to look at the fact that most of the people to the east of the wall are black in color, they are of African-American descent, and most of the people to the west of the wall are people of non-color, then you began to associate that obviously with the racism and bigotry that does in fact exist. And I, here again, I say that for a person to say within themselves, I am not a racist, I am not a bigot, then if you really believe that, then you have a responsibility to eliminate that perception. But a great percentage of Gary, I'm sorry, a great percentage of Hammond is African American. No. 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 Not a great percentage. No. Small percentage. No. 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 Very, very small. small percentage. Uh, were that the case, we wouldn't have a problem in their hand. Less than 6%? Less than 6% oh, yes. yeah. is African American. Frank, let's deal with the logic. But, but apparently these people are having no problems. They have no voice. They don't even, they don't even put them in the historical society. They, they're not, they're non-people. You know, nothing. Nobody. So you're saying that. You're, no, I know you're this. Putting, you're putting, I am the historian for the area. You're putting words in the mouths. No, we want to talk about the wall. No, no but I'm just saying, uh, yeah, why should they care? Let's deal with the logic of the wall. The wall, okay, let's talk the about wall the is across 9th Avenue, okay? The uh, 9th Avenue dump site is approximately 17 acres of land. Now, what is one wall, the length of a street, the width of a street, which we may say be 50 feet to 75 feet, or even 100 feet wide. What is one wall going to do to stop 17 acres of water seepage, whether it be groundwater or surface water? Then well, now, your engineer said that, that 12 inches would stop it. No, no, no. He said the 12 inch mound, but it would have to go across the entire well, length. Across history. Not just across, across the across history. The, yeah, the, the, the whole length. Well, you're saying what now? You're saying across the city. No, across the street. You just have across the one street. Just we, across see, the we're one still street. talking one street. Because uh, the division of the area, that area before, that was a marshland, historically. And the area west of Klein Avenue, the residential area there, they used to be a dam, according to report by the Hammond Division. That was Mr. Jackson, what he's okay. talking about is there is an alternative to a 12-foot dike across the road. There have been reports that would suggest that the elevation of 9th Avenue with federal funds and state funds to elevate 9th Avenue 36 inches and to construct dikes along each side would eliminate any runoff. Not to say that the runoff is contaminated. There have been numerous studies that have concluded that the runoff is not contaminated, that it has no ill effects on the people in Hammond at all. But to satisfy the, the request for the elimination of runoff, we're simply saying that with state and federal monies, we can elevate as an act of compromise. Is Ninth money Avenue, available? 36 inches, and install a dike, and that will eliminate the necessity the But the is the money available? They, they've had the money, but they did not. I need to get you that letter. They've had the money. And I need you to know, get that letter. You know, the only thing to that, if there are some contaminants in the area, why do they let their children play over that wall? They use that as a playground. Sure. Right. Dirt and we're simply saying here uh, today, that not only are they using that as, as a playground, but the citizen of Hammond is using that as a private dump at the expense of the Gary tax bills for cleaning it up. And, you know, simply we have, as I indicated earlier, we have loaned them over a million dollars, which was returned because toward their marina in a spirit of cooperation. We cannot continue to cooperate with someone who's disrespectful to our city and our leaders. And I believe that Mayor Bonds have been cooperating in good faith toward the effort of getting that up, so that was the reason that for the demonstration. What is Mayor Barnes' position on this wall? It's the same as ours. The same as ours. He stated it last week in the newspaper. So why can't, why cannot the, the heads, why can't Mayor Barnes, the, the 
mayor of Gary, why can't he come together with the mayor of Hammond? Well, they've because tried. I believe, they've I believe, tried. They've tried. Uh, okay. uh, Mr. Jackson, I'd just like to say that the reason I believe there's a reason for that. Now, if we'll go to Mr. Golick's uh, district and say it's the district, he represents that constituency. And I believe if we'll go back to Birmingham, Alabama, that's what George Wallace's constituents want to hear that type of racism, segregation today, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. So. Robert Golick is no different than a George Wallace of the South. He's become popular with that stand, he probably will get elected, but you know, I don't think that I think we should expose that that the problem is racism. It's an ugly wall. Mr. Jackson, if the problem of payments, the water, run of water going to the place, we can stop it. If I'm a civil engineer. I'm a civil engineer. We can divert the river. That one it's not a continuous water running all the time. It was only happened that was eight years ago. You can take a bunch of engineers in that area and they tell you there is no problem on that one. Solving that. Yeah. If that is how much water. how much how much will it cost? How much money is involved in presenting an alternative? Yeah. Well, Mr. Jackson, let me let me just add this. You know, I think when we talk about dollars of cleaned up so what is the commitment of our state, local, and federal government to clean up the thing? I don't think we even should get into dollars and cents, you know. We're talking about tearing down a wall that, that separate people, black and white. So if the wall is torn down, then what? Well, there, there are super fun uh, dollars available to deal with the contamination that there is in, in that area. But let me just give you this as, 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 a, as a, a point of how sister cities ought to cooperate. Lake Station had a problem with the dumping on the east side of our, our city, and we had a problem with the dumping on the east side of the city. The council members from Lake Station met with some of the councilmen from Gary, and we worked together to clean up that area. Likewise, we could have done this on the west side of the city if Hammond had taken a log logistical or a logical approach to the solution of their problem. Their answer was, put this wall up here, and I think some of it had to deal with keep Gary out. There, there are those persons here, as Mrs. Milner has said, who don't want to be associated with the, the city of, of Gary. And that was just one outgrowth of this cancer that's, 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 that's bothering and affecting Northwest Indiana. Let me say this to you also, Mr. Jackson. Once you identify a problem that affects two communities, then certainly uh, the leaders from those respective communities must sit down and talk, okay? I'm saying that the mayor of Gary, the previous mayor of Gary, talked with the mayor of Hammond. The present mayor, mayor of Gary talked with the mayor of Hammond. And the city councils have got it together. Uh, the person who represents that district, Councilman Golick, uh, who is a friend of mine, uh, but we are totally at odds on this issue. Totally. Okay, and I want to make that clear. But knowing him a long time, uh, he has refused to he come to the table. It. He's refused to talk about it. He has stated that uh, his mind is unchangeable, and he is at this particular position, and he's not going to change. So I'm simply saying uh, he's only one individual, and, and certainly eight other council members ought to be able to do some things that would effectively remove that wall, and that's presently what we're trying uh, to work on. Councilman, please tell me, if the wall is torn down, then what? Well, if the wall is torn down, then I am sure that that will represent the fact that there, there is a willingness on the part of Hammond uh, as well as Gary. You know, it cannot be a one-way street to make sure that we keep the lines of communication and transportation and opportunity open to our communities who are adjacent to each other. What I would like to know... And as we continue to try to clean up whatever debris is in and around that area. Yeah, I would just like to mention also, Councilman Allen stated that the previous administration had also tried to... to, to to get that wall down. Matter of fact, I think it was up once and they pushed it down with the bulldozer. Uh, you know, it's always been that the previous administration, the city administration under the Hatcher administration. Okay, the Gary City administration. Gary City administration. Uh, also, you know, there was a thing in the area that Gary was a was a island within a sea. In other words, the cooperation that uh, former mayor Richard Hatcher did not cooperate with these people, so they but now we have a spirit of cooperation. What is the real problem other than racism? It was blamed on Richard Hatcher for being having racist ideas, not being willing to work with these communities, not embracing them. 
now we have a situation where we have the embracement, but yet still the wall is still there. What's the, what's the problem? We'll be back to talk more about the wall in just a moment. Thank you so much. Welcome back. We are yet talking about the wall that separates two cities. The cities of Hammond and Gary, both in Indiana. The studio set here is just a little leaner than it should have been. The people from Hammond were with us. Councilman Golick, uh, a couple of other officials from uh, Hammond were with us and decided to walk out. Uh, if you were with us for the early part of the, sh part of the show, you heard the reason for why they walked out. But uh, we do hope to get them back somehow in the near future to talk more about the wall that separates the two cities. Um, Councilman Allen, uh, you were explaining why you felt that that wall, um, or I, I think what you were trying to say is that there are some alternatives. And you named off a, a couple of the alternatives. One is an elevated street at that point. Sir. Uh, the other one, uh, your engineer talked about a little strip 12 inches high going across that street. You also allege that, um, that the wall is a symbol of racism. You said that the person who, who seeks to have the wall uh, made permanent is a friend of yours. How can you say that he would do that as an act of racism and yet remain a friend of yours? Well, I've been knowing him for a long time. Let me put it like that. Uh, he and I have both worked in the area of public safety. Uh, Bob Golick happens to be a member of the fire department in the city of Hammond. And uh, I was a member of the police department in Gary. And we both existed to a large extent under the same kind of uh, political circumstances in our respective cities. And as a result of that, uh, he and I have shared some ideas relative to public safety during the time that I've been a member of the council and certainly during the time that he's been elected uh, over in Hammond. Okay. Uh, but I, you know, it's obvious to me, you know, at this point uh, uh, that we completely at, at different ends of the spectrum relative to... On to this one issue. issue? On this one issue? Oh, yes. Okay. Without a doubt. Okay. Uh, we do have someone from the studio audience who has a question or a comment. Would you please state your name? Yes, my name is Philippa Tolliver, and I'm a Gary citizen. And uh, I'm really concerned, Gary citizen. Certainly. Okay. Um, I, I came uh, to um, state that um, uh, something that uh, Councilman Allen has already stated, and that the um, blockage of the Ninth Avenue wall is uh, a matter of principle as well as inconvenience, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, also, I have a question for uh, the Gary City Council, and that is, will they continue to come out on uh, Saturday, Saturdays to protest uh, on 15th Avenue, the uh, blockage of this wall until it comes down, and what are uh, the next steps or plans that the council has to um, take in order to have this uh, dirt wall removed? Uh, Councilwoman? Well, I might say this to Mrs. Tolliver, that at the City Council meeting tonight, uh, all the council members are sponsoring a resolution which is condemning the action of the Hammond City Council in permanently closing 165th Street at Klein Avenue. And in the final um, paragraphs, it says that we're asking that the citizens of Gary refuse to go around the blockade to spend their money in any businesses in the Hammond area until such time as that wall is removed. Now that will be presented tonight at the Gary City Council meeting and it is sponsored by all council members. But isn't this the same kind of thing you tried to do concerning Maryville and Maryville is yet uh, uh, flourishing because of dollars coming from the No, we no, never, no, we never no. bothered with Maryville. Okay. We, we, we never tried to. Uh, let me it. ask you, is this wall affecting emergency vehicles? Yes. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. To what degree? Yes. Ninth Avenue. Well, it's obvious that uh, Police vehicles or fire engines cannot get through on Ninth Avenue. There are no alternative roads. Uh, the only other access that they have coming from Gary in the mutual aid agreement would be to traverse back to uh, Colfax Street and uh, go down 15th Avenue into Hammond or to go from Colfax all the way to uh, Industrial Highway. 
uh, or Route 20, that is, and go into Hammond. So what's the time certainly loss? If, what's the time loss in, in, in going around? Oh, I around? suspect the time loss may be in the area of five minutes, uh, without a doubt, at five minutes, leaving from uh, 9th and Colfax, trying to get to, say, maybe 165th Street and Kennedy Avenue in Hammond. Uh, you may lose 10 minutes of time. And, and certainly you understand that if a building is on fire, then the most important thing that you have is time. The response time is the most important uh, factor or ingredient involved in that particular situation. And it is also, also obvious that if there were a disaster or, or community, uh, intra-community emergency, uh, we would just have some serious problems trying to either receive help from them, if in fact they wanted to offer that help or give it, or to provide help to them. And we do work under a mutual aid agreement with the city of Hammond, which means that all thoroughfares should be made open uh, to the city of Gary as access and egress as far as Hammond and Gary is, you know, is concerned. I might also say that legally, uh, one of the criteria uh, for receiving uh, federal monies for the improvement of local roads and streets uh, is that uh, uh, those streets uh, that utilize that federal money and that, and that state money uh, be a continuing thoroughfare. Uh, it is obvious to me that Hammond has violated the law in that respect. And uh, we, you know, what we're trying to do now is look at uh, either uh, them repaying the federal government for the money that was used on that road, or not receiving any, any more money or asking intervention by the federal government. I have uh, offered a letter uh, that I hope to present to all the council members in the hopes that uh, and I'm sure they'll sign it. Uh, we're asking uh, federal intervention from our congressional representative. And also, we're going to submit a copy of that letter to the governor of the state of Indiana. If, if in fact, that's the necessity. Uh, what we're hoping is that they can perhaps uh, do something, uh, you know, without us having to do that. As a matter of fact, uh, we're going to be looking at an ordinance this evening at the city council meeting that will prohibit any municipal or commercial or private vehicles from doing business uh, with our Gary Landfill that come from the city of Hammond. And let's go back to our concerned citizen question had not been addressed to one of them and that uh, was will you continue to protest on Saturdays and call for your constituents or Gary citizens to come out and support uh, to uh, let the uh, Hammond uh, people know that we are all together in this particular project and to having that removed that we have come together yes Ms. Tolliver let me respond to it I just indicated to Ron uh, as you know who is the organizer of this uh, event or this protest that I plan to be supportive. Uh, I indicated to him that on Saturday that I'll be tied up with the Miss Teenage Gear pageant with the rehearsals, uh, but I'll be there next Saturday, and I do plan to uh, to bring buttons for us to, to wear at uh, a donation at my cost. That's beautiful, and hopefully, uh, uh, since you won't be able to come, uh, maybe you can publicly and uh, you know ask for the citizens to come out in yeah. your behalf. I've encouraged people from my district to be there already. I know that you okay. have. I just want to know if this will be a continuation. It will be a continuous process. Yes. If I start on something, it's because I believe well, I think in that's it and I'll great. be supportive. Right. Okay. Okay. Let me just. Well, yes. Saturday, uh, Mrs. Tolliver, I will be at the state NAACP meeting, but someone from my family will be there. So there will be somebody representing me there. You, Ms. Allen? Well, I think we spent a lot of time digressing, trying to determine where we're going to be, at what time we're going to be there. I'm going to do everything I can to eliminate that wall, and I'm going to take every opportunity that I can to make sure that it gets torn down. Now, if I choose to be at the, at the, uh, and I certainly support the, uh, the effort over there on 15th Avenue. As a matter of fact, uh, I think we were able to, what was the count, 17 cars that we turned around last year? Yes. And I thought that was very effective, and I was really glad to be a part of that. Uh, I may not be there this Saturday based upon, uh, what I have to do on Saturday afternoon, but I would certainly encourage as many people as possible to participate in an ongoing effort to make sure that those objectives are met. Uh, Frank, let me just deal with a, a legal point. Uh, I understand that Councilman Golick was the one who sponsored the, the ordinance, and this is not a resolution, but an ordinance that appropriates $15,000 for a permanent wall. Uh, Indiana does not allow the city council, the legislative branch, to initiate legislation dealing with money. So the legislation that they're dealing with is, is illegal. Uh, it did not come from the administration. Uh, it came from Councilman Golick. And they're voting on something that's illegal in the first place. Apparently, Councilman Golick has a lot of power and, and quite a deal of influence. 
when he walked out, everyone from Hammond walked out of the studio. Well, we would do that too. I mean, that's no big deal. We would also do that. Uh, so, I mean, that's, you know, that's the way it goes. I think that's his Are you saying that all of the people here in the audience from Gary would have walked out? That's right. Yeah, yes. Aspen. You oh, say yes. absolutely. Oh, yes. Yes. That's right, yeah. See, that's the way we work, too. But let me tell you one thing that uh, someone from Hammond told me, and uh, I'm sure Councilman Golak is going to look at this, so I'd like for him to hear it, that his re-election is based on his keeping these people happy and promoting this feeling that there's something wrong with Gary and he's keeping it up. However, I do know from a political standpoint that that sometimes can backfire because among all of those people, there are going to be a segment of people who are really not racist and who really don't like it. So it may not keep him his position. He may find it'll backfire on him. So I think it's something that he ought to think about. We have two responsibilities as leaders. One, to represent the people, but two, to inform people. That's right. I don't think he's informing people of the real issues and the real facts. He's operating off their emotions and he's, he's, he's building his campaign off of their emotions. What is it costing the city of Gary to work toward demolishing the wall, if anything? It's on their is, is there monetary time? Just time. Time. Now, if we have to go into the legal, uh, into the court system uh, to get it removed, then it's going to cost us some money. Then you're saying it's worth it? It's worth it. I think there is a plan coming up, so when you get us back on here, it probably will have been put into operation. I think that any time that racism raises its ugly head, somebody ought to be there to cut it off. That's true. Is that what you're doing? I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm shopping my blade. You see, yeah, now, I hear people say all the time that whenever blacks or African Americans don't agree with decisions that whites make, the first cry is racism or discrimination. How do you address that? You know, let me just indicate that I think that there are a lot of variables here. I think some people are ill-informed. Uh, what bothers me is, if you read Candide, uh, they talked about a man that uh, he ran into in his travels who said, I'm ignorant, I know I'm ignorant, and I'm content being ignorant. And there's some people like that in the world who don't want to know the facts. They're ignorant and they want to be ignorant, okay? They don't want to know the facts. And I think you have some people on, on, in, in, in both communities who may be that way, but especially we see that being uh, projected uh, with the, the citizens of Hessville that they, they don't want to know the facts. Here, an EPA representative has come in and said there's no contamination that's causing any problems there. And he said, we don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that. We want the wall. And not only do we want the wall as it is, we want it permalized. We want it to be permanent. Uh, I think that's, that's, that's people who don't want to be logical in the first place. When you get that kind of response there, then you have to begin to look for other reasons why people are acting that well, way. Well, you're saying they don't want to be logical. What is logic in this case? What is logic? Looking at the facts and determining if there's a need for that wall. But see, they are saying that there is a need, and it's for health reasons. But the reasons. findings that EPA comes out, we, we take that as a source, okay? They're saying that there's no, there's no basis for that. Here's the report. You look at it. You read it. It talks about the soil test. It talks about the groundwater, it talks about the surface water and the air quality out there. Then if EPA has so stated, how is Hammond able to yet contend that there's a problem? Because they have an emotional height out there and, they, and they're working to build on that emotional height. Okay. We need to go back to the uh, studio microphone. So would you please tell us who you are and uh, state your question or comment. Uh, my name is Charles Kirkland. I want it known that I have been a citizen of Gary for the past 55 years, with the exception of 15 years that I spent in the service during World War II and the Korean conflict. My question to the council is, since you have been negotiating with, uh, had some hearings with the uh, Hammond Council, what authority have they justified and taking a step like that, that is legal authority, to block a street. It's my understanding that underneath Klein Highway, that is a part of governmental property, Ninth Avenue, 
is a part of governmental property. How have they tried to justify taking on themselves to block a public street? And the next question is, those of us who feel strongly about this issue, Is there any law to say that we cannot get our picks, our shovels, our hoses, and anything else and go over and open the street? We're down to about two minutes now. I need to know, uh, uh, well, let, let's answer this question. How are they able to do it and can it be torn down by citizens? Number one, when it was torn down before by the previous Gary administration, we tore down the part that was on Gary's property. Uh, their contention is that they have a right to self-determination, whether it's racist or, or otherwise, and that the wall has been constructed on their boundary line, and it's, in fact, their property. So one might determine that they might be uh, in violation of a Hammond law if they went on Hammond's property and just arbitrarily tore that wall down, although it may very well come to that. You see, the leaders in Hammond have to determine uh, how far they want to proceed with this thing because uh, we have people on both sides who are very emotional about this issue, and I'm not so sure if this thing continues that we're going to be able to uh, control people or, or even if, in fact, we would really want to control people. You see what I mean? Uh, so somewhere along the line, there's going to have to be something done that's going to eliminate that wall, so certainly we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that it's torn down. Could it lead to violence? No. We hope not. We hope not. Oh, we hope we're, not. We're, we're, solved any problems at all. We'll certainly follow, follow up this edition of the Frank Jackson Show with more conversation, more discussion concerning the wall that separates the two cities. Again, we'll try to get those people back from Hammond and we'll try to come to some conclusion or at least find out if, if there is a, a, a happy medium somewhere uh, in the picture. Until next time, I'm Frank Jackson. I know I'll hold a lot of